I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. How good and how pleasant it is, brothers and sisters, to dwell together in unity. And we greet you on this, the Lord's Day at Shiloh Baptist Church, which is located 635 College Street here in Henderson, North Carolina. For those of you who are in worship this morning, as well as those who will join us by live streaming, and those who will join us through YouTube, our prayer is that you might be blessed through this worship experience. And when we come to the close of this service with the benediction, that you will look back over an hour that's been far spent and not just say that you joined Shiloh today in service, but that you have been with the Lord. Might we share a few housekeeping matters as we even continue to worship. Uh, during our prayer time, we want to lift up all of those whom, whose names we have shared in times past. And to add to that list, we want to remember in special prayer this morning, Deaconess Laura Taylor, as well as Sister Amy Askew and her son, Brother Davian. And we want to continue to remember all of those other persons whose names have been listed. Mother Freddie LeMay, Mother Zelma Kaysen, our church mothers, want to keep lifting them in prayer. And we've been asked, of course, to continue to lift Sister Ramona Rice, who is undergoing treatment uh, in Georgia at this time. So might we continue to pray for her. While we're praying for these persons, we extend our deepest sympathy to those persons who have suffered losses, and we pray for them as well. Might we pray for Sister Jacqueline Van Gu, who lost her son, Mr. Azavia Van Sr., Sister Akelia Van Alexander, Sister Artorias Van Arrington, Sister Natikia Van, who lost their brother, Mr. Xavier Van Sr., Sister Joanne Van Henderson, Brother Andre Van, uh, Brother Paul Van, Reverend John Van, who lost their nephew, Mr. Xavier Van, Sister Sandra Darensburg, and Brother Jashan Van, who lost their cousin. May each of these persons know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Don't forget to join us on Tuesday at the seven o'clock hour as we share our Sunday school lesson, which is available for those who are part of the household of faith for Shiloh, as well as for our friends. And might we uh, remember, we have for the last couple of Sundays made mention of back to school supplies. And today, of course, um, this will be the final day that we'll make an appeal if you're desirous of sharing in your offertory service giving a special gift to the back to school supplies and of course on your memo line and on your envelope make make note of that and we will make sure that you are represented as we purchase school supplies to share with our students in our particular designated area along with these might we keep in mind that the delta variant is continuing to make its way around and might all of us stay vigilant as well as stay safe doing all those things that we know that are within our power that we can do. Finally, when you were coming in, you may have seen some flyers and this is what they look like. Um, this has to do with Lifeline screening and we will have another Lifeline screening here at Shiloh. We've talked, the, talked with them about all the precautionary measures that need to be taken and so we're on the same page. This will be on Monday, September 27, 2021. And of course, for you to be a part of this, there's a registration number that you need to call. If this is something that is of interest to you, then please be sure to get one of these particular flyers. There are various screenings that are done, uh, plaque screening, atrial fibrillation screening, aneurysm screening, arterial disease screening, risk assessment screening, um, as well as osteoporosis screening. And I think you can get four tests for $139 and five tests for $149. They do not use the insurance cards. Um, they expect us to pay up front and then, of course, for people to uh, go with their own insurance company and request that the insurance company reimburse them. So keep that in mind. Finally, we want to say, as always, a very special thank you to the Reverend Shelton Anderson, who has blessed us and continue to bless us with not only his technological skills and his services, but he continues to give of himself so unselfishly. And uh, even currently, he is undergoing therapy. Might we continue to pray for him and pray with him that as only God himself can do, that he might sustain him and keep him and bless him even during this time. And now, let us worship. Our Father, now God, we thank you so much for another day's journey. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for last night's sleeping, for this morning's awakening. 
We thank you, dear God, because our beds were not our cooling boards and our sheets were not our final rest. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have given us the activities of our limbs. And even though we are wrestling with COVID-19, the Delta variant, oh God, we thank you that things are as well as they are. Father, we pray for those who have gathered in this house this day. We pray for those who are part of our household. We pray for those who are part of our family, those who are part of our community, those who are part of our employment. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who, whose names have been called, and not just those names, but all the other names, and those names that rest in our heart. God, we pray for them this day. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be in everything that we do here. Right now, forgive us for all of our sins and all of our shortcomings. Help us to focus on worshiping you in spirit and worshiping you in truth. Lord, we pray that you will move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We pray, God, that if there are those who are carrying heavy loads, Lord, that you will lift them you will lift their loads this day. You will lighten their loads. We pray, oh God, if there are those who are sick and or afflicted, who are in the sanctuary or even joining us through technology, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your healing virtue will minister to them right now. Heavenly Father, if there are those who are listening in the sanctuary or even just sharing with us in service, Lord, who have had surgery and or who are scheduled for surgery, who are undergoing treatment of one kind or another. God, we pray right now that you will let your healing virtue be done in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will touch those who need a special touch. You will heal those who need special healing. Oh, God, that you will deliver those who need to be delivered. Father, right now we pray for our lost sons and daughters, for our lost sisters and brothers, for our lost mothers and fathers. We pray for our lost aunts and uncles. We pray for our lost employers and employees. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are lost in our community. We pray, God, for those who are lost in this world. God, have mercy in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray, we pray that something uh, will be said and something will be done and our lives will be lived in such a way that somebody might come to know Jesus the Christ. Now, Heavenly Father, less of me and more of thee. My prayer is, Heavenly Father, that you will move Seth out of the way and that you will say what you want to say and do what you want to do because I'm just an instrument in your hand. Without you, I can do nothing. But, oh God, with you, we're able to do all things through Jesus Christ who gives us strength. Now, God, we pray that you'll give us a special word this day for these, your people, those who have gathered and those who are sharing with us through technological means. Father, we pray that none of us would be the same after having worshiped with you this day. And Lord, when we come to the close of this service, oh Lord, we'll, we pray that we'll look back over a, a time that's been far spent and that, oh Lord, as we go through this day, we'll just give you thanks. We'll honor you. We'll worship you. We'll adore you. We will just look at how awesome you are. And we'll never, never, never forget, God, what you've done for us. Heavenly Father, we pray now that if there's anything for which we have failed to ask, that you will not fail to grant it. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us. Feed us, Jesus. God, we need a word from you. Feed us until we want no more. If you do it, and I know you will, we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask it now in that name that is above every name, and that name is Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 For our scripture, we want to call our attention to one verse that is found in 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the 17th verse. And this is certainly a familiar verse for most of us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature or a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. From the New International Version of Bible, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And this same verse in the 17th verse, 5th chapter of 2 Corinthians from the King James Version Bible, therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. 
God said. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for blessing us. Such, such an appropriate song at this time as we go through life and as we wrestle and deal with COVID-19. The Lord is our light and Amen. our salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you for blessing us, Reverend Anderson. Now, shortly we'll be leaving the sanctuary. I uh, teased up with some folks and I said, I reckon if we ever get back to normal, uh, and I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon, you all will tie and feather me if I try to take you back to what we used to do. I believe some of you have gotten good and used to this hour of service. And that's okay with me. Um, but it is different. It is very different. Uh, but thanks be to God uh, that we can come for this little while. Amen. Amen. Because this is important that we can come for this little while. I think in terms of over the year when we couldn't come into the sanctuary, but even at that time, God fixed it so that we could still join each other. And now, although we can't get back to what we call the old normal, we thank God for what we do have. Sometimes we're so busy looking at what we don't have that we don't take the time to say thank you for what we do have. So God, we just want you to know we say thank you for what we do have. And there are some who have come in since we've gotten in here, and if you'd like to stand and turn and wave right where you are, that's certainly okay. Uh, at this time, if you want to meet and greet from where you are, just wave to fellow brothers and sisters. You might not even can recognize each and every person. These masks do a number on us, but even so, it's all good. Amen. It's all good in the name of the Lord. I want to talk for a few minutes from this familiar passage of Scripture, um, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the 17th verse in whether you use the New International Version Bible or whether you use the King James Version Bible or whether you use some other translation, um, the passage comes out to be one and the same. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. And I want to talk for a few minutes about a wonderful change. That's what I want to talk about for a few minutes, a wonderful change. I want to preach today about change, a wonderful change. Change is inevitable, even though misery is optional. We have the option of, of being miserable or not, but we don't have the option of change. Any thought that we can live without change is none other than an illusion. And an illusion is something that deceives us or even misleads us intellectually. It is not possible for us to live without change. To live is to grow, and to grow is to change. Every, everything changes, but there's one thing that remains the same. Everything changes, but one thing remains the same. Time changes, people change, situations change, methods change, businesses change, government changes, uh, conditions change, things change. However, truth remains the same. The whole world is in a state of change. The sun rises and sets. The stars, the moon, and the clouds, they don't stay at the same place, but they move. The seasons change. Fashions change. Products change. Uh, the temperature changes. Storms and storm patterns change. How much rain we get or how much rain we don't get changes. Automobiles change, electronics change, products change, appliances change, medical care and surgical options change. The quality of things that we buy changes. The cost of anything that we purchase over time will change. All that I'm saying is that everything in life changes, but that truth remains the same. There are many quotes on change and much research has been done about people and change as creatures of habit and beings who like routines to be automatic change jolts us into consciousness change can be threatening because it brings with it a level of uncertainty we like for things to be certain not uncertain we like for things to be predictable not unpredictable Woodrow Wilson said, if you want to make enemies, try to change something. 
Someone said nothing changes if nothing changes. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And if I always do what I have always done, then I'll get and keep getting what I've always got. Someone else said maybe sometimes people do not actually change. Maybe we just didn't know who they really were in the beginning. While we may not know the person whom we thought we knew, even the person whom we thought we knew changed. Muhammad bin Rashid said, we people change. We can be miserable or we can be happy. If we welcome change, then we will spot the fantastic opportunity that change brings into our lives. And if we run from change, there are a lot of people who run from change. We will never be open to seize wonderful opportunities. Somebody else said, you cannot change the people around you, but you can change the people that you choose to be around. Amen. Since I cannot stop change, how can I cause change to work in my favor? Anything that is changed is made different. The Reverend Dr. Jonathan Bush wrote the version, his own version of the creation. And I thought it would be something that would move us right on along, give us something to think about. And so I'm going to share this. Um, this is how it goes. According to Dr. Jonathan Bush, God created a mew and told the mew, you will work constantly from dawn to dusk. You will have to carry heavy loads on your back. Your whole life, you will eat grass and you will lack intelligence. As a matter of fact, you will be called a jackass by some. I'm going to give you 50 years to live and make your contribution to the world. And the muse said to God, I don't want to live 50 years. That's way too long to be doing what you said I'm supposed to do. Can you give me just 20 years? And the Lord said, okay. And it was so. Next, God created a dog. And God told the dog, you will hold the vigilance over the dwellings of man to whom you will be his greatest companion. You will eat his table scraps and you will be contented. I'm going to give you 25 years of life. And the dog said to God, I don't want to live 25 years. That's too long to eat those table scraps. Can you shorten my life to 10 years, please? And the Lord said, okay. And it was so. Well, as the Lord created the monkey, the Lord told the monkey, you will swing from tree to tree. You'll be acting like you're an idiot. However, people will watch you and say that your behavior is cute. You will make them laugh. And so I'm going to give you 20 years. And the monkey asked God, since 20 years is a long time to act like a clown in public and in the world, will you please consider shortening it to 10 years? And the Lord said, okay. And it was so. Finally, the Lord got to his prized possession, that's us, and said, you are the, you are man. You're the only rational being that will walk the earth. You will use your intellect to have mastery over all the creatures in the world, those that are large as well as those that are small. And you will dominate the earth. And I'm going to give you 20 glorious years of life. When man responded to God, this is what man said. Lord, to be a man in this big, big world, this big, beautiful world for just 20 years is too short. It's too short of a life. I need some more time. Will you please give me the 30 years that the mule refused and the 15 years that the dog refused and the 10 years that the monkey refused? And if you do that, then it will stretch my life for around 75 wonderful years. And this was the Lord's response. And so, let it be. I will allow man to live 20 years that I gave him as a man. The man will marry and live 30 years like a mule, working and carrying heavy loads on his back. And then man will have children.
children and live 15 years like a dog, guarding his house and eating leftovers. And then in man's old age, men will live the balance of his days 10 years like a monkey. So let it be, he'll be acting like a, few, a fool just to amuse his grandkids. So let it be. Man thinks that life, the life that I destined for him is not quite right. So let it be. Man thinks that it's life, the life that I destined for him. Friends, if mortal men could change the number of days that we live on earth with the promise that we will have to endure the bitter and the sweet, the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, the better or for worse, the, the in sickness and in health, I don't think we will be pleading for more time. What a wonderful change. Now I want to share another story because the next story really leads into my sermon for today. As a matter of fact, to some degree, it summarizes my sermon. And as I said to uh, Reverend Shelton Anderson when we were not able to have you in the, in the audience with us, I told him that I've been moved in the direction of doing part and partial storytelling because storytelling has a way of connecting with people where they are and helping them to, to connect and, and follow along. So I want to share another story with you because it really leads into my text and it summarizes my sermon. There was an old warehouse that was being sold. It had been empty for a very long time. All the windows were shattered. Gangs had damaged the building with graffiti, which, which was sprawled all over it. Every door had been damaged, if not knocked down completely. And the outside and the inside were littered with all kinds of trash. As a matter of fact, some homeless people had even lived in it for a while in the past. And now it looked like a dumping ground. In this community, it was a serious, serious, very serious eyesore. As the owner took the buyer to the property, the owner said to the buyer, if you will make the deal final and purchase this building, I will replace all the doors, I will replace all the windows, I will bring in a crew to paint over the graffiti, and I will bring in another crew to clean up all the debris. The buyer said, save your money. That won't be necessary. Don't spend your money on repairs. When I buy this place, I'm going to build something completely different. I don't want the building. I want the site. Well, when we came to Jesus, we didn't need a makeover nor a touch-up job. Our sinful lives were slated for the wrecking ball. Thus, our text reads, if any man, woman, boy, or girl is in Christ, he or she is a new creation or a new creature. Jesus didn't want to fix up our old building. He wanted the site. This is the message of the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. Christ seeks to own the site, to own us. Christ seeks to obtain the rights of property, of the property, so he can construct a new building. A new building, a new building, I said. He wants to construct a new building all together. The gospel of Jesus is not about renovation. The gospel of Jesus is not about rehabilitation. The gospel of Jesus is not about patching up an old life or an old structure. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about regeneration and righteousness through faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. In our text, Paul calls this a new creation. God is creating something that was never before created. God is creating something that comes from above. This is so priceless. This is so precious. This is so profound. This is so awesome. And this is so undeserving. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians at a very vulnerable time in his life. He had learned that the church at Corinth was struggling, and so he sought to preserve the unity of that local body of believers. This book was written in 56 AD, and prior to now there had been divisions in the church. 
Prior to now, there had been quarrels of all kind in the church. Prior to now, there was even immorality in the church. Prior to now, there had even been false witnesses, false teachers in the church. And by the time that Paul writes 2 Corinthians, many who had been divisive had repented. And the problems had been resolved and corrected in the Corinthian church. Even so, Paul wants the church in Corinth to imitate what the churches in Macedonia were doing. The Macedonians had been giving firstly of themselves to the Lord. And then they were generous givers. As a matter of fact, the Macedonians gave beyond their means. In this text, Paul gives us a clear definition of what it means to be a Christian. A Christian is a blood-bought son or a blood-bought daughter of God who has a new, a new, a new, a new spiritual nature that lives through the body, allowing the newly converted to experience newness and freshness that otherwise cannot be experienced. To be a new creature, to be a new creation, a Christian, uh, a Christian means that all charges against us were dropped. Our past is forgiven. Our future is hopeful. And our present is meaningful. We are a new creation. We are a new creature. We have been transformed, which means that we have undergone change. We've been changed from being dead to sin to alive to Christ. We've been changed, I tell you. Change, which means we've gone from being lost to being found. Change, I tell you. Change, which means, which means, which means we've gone from being hurt to being healed and made whole. Change, I tell you. Change, which means that we've gone from being sad to being happy. Change. We've been changed, which means to become or to make different. If any person is in Christ, then that person is changed. To be in Christ means to be invaded by a power and a presence that is now the ruling power in our life. No wonder our ancestors said, I look at my hands. And my hands look new. I look at my feet. And my feet did too. I started to talk. And I had a new talk. I started to walk. And I had a new walk. Why? Because I am a new creature. And I have been invaded. I have been taken over by Jesus Christ. Is there a witness in the house that your life has been taken over by Jesus Christ? And because of Christ, your life is not just changed, but your life is changed forever. And that settles it. When Christ invades your life, oh, what a wonderful change. When Christ invades our life, oh, what a wonderful change. Paul was a persecutor of the church. But when Christ invaded his life, Paul became a preacher. Peter was a cursor. But when Christ invaded his life, Peter became a Christian. Yeah. The jailer was a non-believer. But when Christ invaded his life, the jailer became a believer. The thief on the cross was a criminal, y'all. But when Christ stopped dying long enough to hear his cry, the thief became a saved man yeah. from damnation. Matthew, mm -hmm. the tax collector. By the standards of the Jews, he was a betrayer of his people. Matthew was given the power by the government to use force at his disposal to collect taxes and even to rob and enrich himself. But when Christ invaded Matthew's life, Matthew became a disciple. Two men were just Pharisees, just Pharisees, just Pharisees. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. But when Christ invaded their lives, they became lovers yeah. of Jesus Christ. Mary Magdalene was possessed by many devils, yeah. by many demons. But when Christ invaded her life, 
She became a faithful follower Amen. of Jesus Christ. All that I'm saying is that Christ wants to take ownership, take over ownership of your sight, in, and that is your life. Jesus makes the difference in anybody's life. At the end of the day, Christ changes people to change people. He changes us for us to help him change people. At the end of the day, nothing changes if nothing changes. We have to change our ownership. We work under the ownership of the devil. We work under the ownership of Satan. But now there's a new owner. Who has bought out the old business. Yeah. Oh yeah. God has bought us with a price. Which is the power. Of Christ's shed blood. We have to change. Our relationship. When we put our trust in Christ. We enter into a binding relationship. With God. Whereby we are no longer foreigners. We are no longer Gentiles. But we are made children. Oh yeah. By our new birth. But because we have been adopted into the royal family, thus we are permanent heirs of an eternal inheritance which is reserved for us in heaven. We have to change our direction. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, new creatures, that's what we are. New creations, that's what we are. We have to change our direction. We no longer on the broad way whereby many travel. And this is the road that leads to hell and destruction. We are on the highway that leads to heaven. We have to change our desire. The Christian life is about more than shedding a few tears and being remorseful over our past. The Christian life is about more than leaving off bad habits and bad company. The Christian life is about more than practicing good behavior. The Christian life is about more than getting baptized in the church. The Christian life is about more than turning over a new leaf in life. The Christian life is the inception, the inception of a new life. We have to change our behavior. All of us were born in sin. Every last one of us. All of us were born in sin. We were sinners. Amen. Amen. Some of us were closet sinners. Yeah, yeah. We did what we did in the dark yeah. and out of sight of the general public. Yeah. And some of us were flamboyant sinners. Yeah. We did what we did in the opening and just didn't care who saw us or who heard us or who we heard or who offended us or whom we offended. Even so, we were all sinners. Yeah. No good sinners and bad sinners. No big sinners and little sinners. We were all sinners. Sinners. Lost. And undone. Even so, we were all sinners. But now, we've been washed. Now, we've been sanctified. Now, we've been justified. In the name of Jesus Christ. And while we are not perfect, we're on our way, on our way to perfection. What a wonderful change. If any person is in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Yeah. Paul sheds light on what Christians are supposed to look like. What we were, we are no more. Let me say that again. What we were, we were sinners. What we yeah. were, we are no more. Yeah. Ah, no, 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 no. Christ washed us up. Yeah. Christ sanctified us. Christ justified us. And Christ gave us a renewed spirit and a renewed mind and a renewed heart. Our new lease on life is life everlasting. Yeah, yeah. Life with no end. Life with an ageless, ageless, ageless expiration. And life that's continued with a perpetual ending. What a wonderful change. Mm -hmm. Listen. According to this text. Stop letting your past. Define who you are. Stop pulling out your drawer. Looking for your old life. Stop looking under your bed. 
for your old life. Stop looking in the closet for your old life. Stop looking in the shed for your old life. Stop letting people bring up your old life. Yeah. Your old life is gone. Yeah. Gone. Gone, I tell you. Yeah. All the old stuff of your old life is gone. All the things you wish that you had never done are gone. If they never as if they never happened, because as far as Christ is concerned, when we're covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, it never happened. I need to say that again. When it's gone, because when we are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, it's as if it never happened. It's canceled out. It is gone. So if Christ can put it under the blood, and as far as Christ is concerned, it never happened. Why are you even worried about what other folks say? What other folks think? Who cares? As long as the master is satisfied with you. As long as the master is satisfied with me. That's all that, that matters. Your old life is gone. All the old stuff. Mm. All the old stuff of your old life is gone. All the things you wish that you had never done, they are gone as if they never happened because as far as Christ is concerned, it's all covered under the blood and as far as Christ is concerned, it never happened when Christ changes us. He does not overhaul the old man. No, 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 no. That's not what's in this text. He does not overhaul the woman. That's not what's in these, this text. When he Changes us. Each part of our life is made new. That's what's in this text. Christ did not reconcile us and save us when we were righteous and good. It would have been in vain for him to come. If we were so righteous and so good for him to go to the cross for sins, if we were walking around here and we were not committing any sin. That's not why he came for us. Christ reconciled and saved us in that when we were enemies of God yeah, yeah. and when we ignored God yeah. and when we rejected God, yeah. there was no way back to God. So Christ came because yes, yes, yes. we were sinners. Thank As you, sinners, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was an enemy of God. That's what you were too. Because I chose the temporal over the eternal. Yeah. I chose the worldly over the heavenly. Yeah. What a wonderful change. Before I met Jesus and became a new creation, I rebelled against God. Before I met Jesus and became a new creation, yeah. I rejected God. Before I became a new creature, yeah, yeah, yeah. A new creature. I ignored God. I fought against God. I denied God. I even refused to live for God. The truth is that so did each of us. Yeah. As a sinner, I was an enemy of God. As a sinner, I was infected and infested with sin. Yeah. And so were you. I needed a change badly. Before I met Jesus, I was dead to God. But since I met Jesus, I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. I am in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before I met Jesus, I was not sure about God. But since I met Jesus, I'm absolutely, positively sure about God. Before I met Jesus, I never really fellowship with God. But since I met Jesus, I'm in sweet communion with God. Before I met Jesus, I was living in sin and immorality. But since I met Jesus, I'm living in holiness and righteousness. Before I met Jesus, yeah, 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 I had to face death alone, alone forever. But since I met Jesus, I will never die. Before I met Jesus, I was doomed to judgment and eternal separation. But since I met Jesus, I, I will live forever in his presence. Ah, I thank God. Ah, 
I thank Jesus. I thank the Holy Spirit that my past doesn't define me. I, I've been changed. I'm a new creature, and it's a wonderful change. I'm a new creature, I tell you, and it's a wonderful change. I'm a new creature, and it's a wonderful change. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light down in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Ah, I've ceased from my wandering and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. In my sins, which were many, they are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart yeah. and no dark clouds of doubt. Now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley of death now for me since Jesus came into my heart. In the gates of the city beyond I can see since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there, y'all. I'll go to the dwell in the city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, yeah. so happy, yeah. as yeah. whom would I go yeah. since Jesus yeah. came into my heart, since Jesus yeah. came into my heart, yeah. since Jesus yeah. came into my heart, floods of joy on my soul, like the sea built on, since Jesus yeah. Yeah. came into yeah. my heart. Yeah. What? A wonderful change. What? A wonderful change. What? A wonderful change. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into your heart. What a wonderful change. Don't you ever, 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 ever be ashamed of the change that Christ has made in your life, that Christ is making in your life, because that's good news. Yeah. Had he not made a change in our life, we'd be lost and undone, we'd be on our way to a devil's hell. But because he made a change in our life, we're redeemed and we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Forever! Yeah. Yeah. And ever! Yeah. And ever! Yeah. And ever, and ever, the past is the past, and the past no longer counts. Thank God. Sin in the past is not remembered, is not even written down. Slate has been washed clean. God looks at us and sees not a past, but God looks at us and sees newness. He sees a new creation. Yeah, yeah. He sees a new creature. Yes. May the Lord bless you. Yes, may he strengthen you. And may he keep you. And may you walk in newness. In newness. In newness. May you walk in newness. Because that's who you are. And that's what you are. If any man, woman, boy, or girl is in Christ Jesus, yeah. he or she is a new creature, yes, yes. a new creation. Yes, yes. I don't care what the naysayers say, I'm coming up with what God said. Yes, yes. He or she is a new creature, a new creation. All things passed away. Yes, yes. And behold, not some things. Not a few things, not many things, but all, yeah. all things have become new. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, 
Thank you for the newness. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you that you didn't overhaul us because we were so messed up. My Lord. And you didn't even bring in a wrecking ball to destroy us, but Jesus. you just forgave us for the past. Thank you. And then you put newness in us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood that was shed on Calvary. Yes. You took our place. But for your love and for the love of God, yes, yes. all of us would have gone to a devil's hell. My Lord. But Lord, you loved us. God, you loved us so much. Yes, you did. That you provided a way yes, for us. Did. And so, Lord, with uplifted hands and open hearts, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for newness. Thank you for what Jesus did for us. Thank you, God, for accepting what Jesus did for us. And thank you for accepting us back into the royal family. Yes, yes. And God, thank you for reminding us that we are new creatures. We are new creations. Yes. Old things are gone. And behold, all things are new. Yes. And so, Lord, in this newness, we just look forward to you doing newer and greater things. In this newness, we only want to live for you in this newness, God. Yes, God. We only want you to be first in our life. In this newness, God, yes, we only want to, to do your blessed will. In this newness, God, yes. we, don't, we are not looking for the old, the old man, the old woman, the old self. In this newness, God, we only want to see what thus saith the Lord. Yes. So now, God, help us all. Yes. Help us all yes. as we go from day to day. Help us all go before us as a leading lamp. Guide and direct our path. Yes. And keep us all in the straight and the narrow way. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we realize that challenges may come. Mm -hmm. We realize, Heavenly Father, that friends may even go. Yeah. But because of the newness, yes, we have a promise that you are with us yes. forever yes. and forever. We love you, God. We worship you. We adore you, God. And if we had 10,000 bosses, we couldn't say thank you enough. But with the one that we have, we just say, God, we love you. We thank you. We worship you. We thank you for everything you've done for us, for everything you're doing for us, and for everything that your word said you're going to do for us. And God, we are excited about who you are. We're excited yeah. about what you're doing in our life. We're excited, God, about the path that you have directed for us. We are excited, God, mm -hmm. about what your will is for us. Yes. Help us now just to stand still until your way is clear. Lord, bless these, my brothers and my sisters, those who are in the sanctuary, as well as those who are joining us in live streaming, those who are joining us through YouTube. God, we pray that you will bless them and make them a blessing. Bless us and make us a blessing. And God, because you have brought a change in us, keep reminding us that changed people have been put here by you to help change people. Yeah, yeah. So God, help us to take our great commission seriously. Help us to do kingdom work and take it seriously. Yes. Help us to share with others uh, the, great, the great love of Jesus Christ yes. and that no man, woman, boy, or girl could ever give that kind of love, but Jesus gave what it took. And so, Father, just keep reminding us yes. that you loved us and you love us just that much. Now, Lord, go with us today, tomorrow, and always. And keep reminding us that we are changed. Yes. And it's a glorious change. Yes. It's a mighty glorious change. Yes. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name and the people of God said amen. 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 Go in peace and walk in your newness, not the old way, but the new way, because you are new creations and you are new creatures. Amen.